backbone of ophthalmic surgery where you have to do a surgery in a way where patients should achieve a best outcome possible because that is the one surgery where you would understand patient will appreciate your surgical skills and outcome wise so let me go through the basics of surgery you can see this is a a, a patient who's have a good dilatation dilatation is very very important and examination of uh, the eye as such is important right from the cornea which remains ocular surface should be pretty good for these patients if patients have ocular surface disease that has to be treated before you go for surgery for these patients if you are looking for a multifocal lenses toric lenses your entire topography can be totally changed with treatment or without treatment of ocular surface so look for ocular surface disease especially mgd for a this cataract group of age group of patients then look for examination of a nucleus which is a hardness of nucleus will be defined status of anterior and posterior capsule should be looked into apart from the corneal endothelium status in these patients you can see a good dilatation is a prerequisite of all these patients i would normally do a three incision main site uh, and two site ports one for uh, doing a uh, manipulations this is for a uh, secondary instrumentations you can see here this is the uh, delineation of posterior capsule because one of the most important part which we like to safeguard in all cataract surgery is posterior capsule because that will be the resting phase of your intraocular lens which is in the bag implantation and second important thing is to safeguard the endothelium apart from the other intraocular structure which you are there is said so see here we are looking for a, a entire posterior capsule here which is clearly delineated which is intact all around and you have a uniformity of nucleus hardness so this is a great 3 plus nucleus and a clear uh, posterior capsule so once you have a clear posterior capsule your hydro procedure is going to be easier you're going to do a more aggressive hydro dissection so your surgery becomes simpler so when you are examining your patient at slit lamp make sure you try to see the posterior capsule also there if it is accessible but if you have a cataract which is totally brown or black you can't see the posterior capsule if you have white cataract again there will be difficulty but if you have a oct on the microscope then you can maybe you can able to see the posterior capsule also all cases of a posterior polar cataract i would recommend you to examine thoroughly and do a entry segment oct or in the your clinic to see the status of the posterior capsule or look for the amount of a size or disc which is hampering the view of posterior capsule larger the disc more chances of posterior capsule dissection your patient you can pick up the totally open posterior capsule also so this is what i would say posterior capsular status has to be seen before we actually go for a uh, the proper hydro procedure in these cases once we fill up the entry chamber of viscoelastic normally viscoelastic should be clear and transparent and should retain the uh, intraocular space throughout your procedure of capsular access so you can see this is the entire capsule of uh, this patient this is under uh, viscoelastic i'm doing for a side port so that gives you access to a continuous maintain of pressure of entire capsule no leakage of viscoelastic you can very easily do a capsular access with needle cystitome also but if you are using a capsular access forceps so you have to do for a main port the viscoelastic leaks out the so multiple times you have to fill the entire chamber viscoelastic now nowadays you get a uh, micro forceps also with which you can do a good capsular access through the side port also so this is the completion of a capsular access you can see you can see the initiation of capsule you can see the capsule picked up the most importantly there is no disturbance of a cortex so that is very important when you are doing a capsular access make sure your cortex is not disturbed if your cortex is disrupted then your access visibility is poor and access can be difficult in that situation if you are a beginner it's always better to put a a, a dye on the entire capsule even even you have a good glow like this so if you have a dye injected you can see the capsule during your capsule access you can see the capsule access as during your manipulation of nephrotomy iol insertion other procedure also so i recommend young people doing a feco uh, recently they should stain the capsule all the time so this is what we see in these cases even uh, sometimes you lose the access you can see the oct and you have pick up the access area also in hazy corneas so this is a central circular capsular access which should be around 5 mm size subsequent to this now we go to initiate the capsular uh, hydro procedure so before you initiate the hydro procedure first thing you have to understand is you have to remove the viscoelastic which is then entry chamber so they don't fill up the chamber pressurized second thing is do a hydro procedure from the main old main tunnel never do it from the side ports 
because you can increase the pressure and in a weak capsule you can have a problem there. So this is what I'm doing here. I have taken all the viscoelastic out with the pressurizing the bubble area, old area. Then subsequently I'll go with the fluid injection. And uh, you can see I'll go just behind the anterior capsular axis, first going without the injecting. First go underneath the capsular axis, then inject the fluid. And you should have either one cc or two cc syringe in your hand so that your pressure is low and the fluid doesn't go in a rapidity, which is not uh, uh, important for a routine cases, but it's very important for a posterior capsular weakness. So this is what I'll start from here. You can see the wave uh, going through. You can see the wave has reached here. So this is the completion of a hydro dissection. Take out the fluid from this area and subsequently from the sub-incision area. You can just see the in OCT, you'll see the delineation has happened here. So this is the one delineation which is removing the, the nucleus from the cortical uh, complex. And there's a multiple delineation. This is the cortical support which is going to be there to the posterior capsule during your nucleus emulsification. So that is important. You have to have a good dissection to safeguard your posterior capsule. So I'll just go forward now. I can see how beautifully we are delineated here. And see amount of fluid which is uh, being injected here. So this is a large amount of fluid which goes in. You don't understand how much space it's going to create. And just compression from the side will decrease the fluid. Once you compress, the fluid decreases. So there's the importance of uh, decompression of entry chamber, which is important before initiating the seco. So this is what I was saying. The second phase is to protect the endothelium. So what I normally do in all cases, I'll inject the dispersive viscoelastic first, which is normally viscose, which is like an oil type of thing. Then inject a cohesive viscoelastic underneath that to push this dispersive towards the endothelium. And that will coat the endothelium and that will remain towards the end of surgery. Just putting dispersive viscoelastic doesn't coat the endothelium. That is important. So I injected dispersive viscoelastic. Now I inject uh, cohesive viscoelastic subsequently. Then go with the FACO here. So for a beginners, when we do FACO, normally we run the FACO while going in. While coming out, there's no FACO. And make a little trench so that you, ha you can judge the hardness of nucleus as well as you go to a little deeper for your holding and chopping subsequently. So this is a stop and chop technique. You can see I'll make a little area of trench. This, I know how much is my hardness. Accordingly, you can adjust your FACO parameters. So once I have this, I'll just hold it and chop it. So I'll just hold it here and uh, vertical chop and horizontal separation with little bit of rotation towards your side. So just separation is there not much a space to begin with. So once separate you rotate, the piece will have a more area to separate subsequently. So you can see my trench was quite deep enough. If you see here, the trench was quite deep enough here and subsequently I could chop very easily here. So chopping is done complete. Chopping has to be done from the periphery to center. It should separate. The all pieces should be separated. So we'll do a multiple uh, pieces of nucleus uh, chopping first. Subsequently, you can emulsify one by one. So that's an easy way to handle. You can remove piece by piece also sometimes. When, one important thing here is when we are doing a chopping of a piece, make sure you hold in the middle of a, uh, the uh, mass you have. So that when you're chopping, you have equal mass either side, there will be less tilting. So if you hold in the one peripheral area, one side will be a larger mass, so that will create a little bit of compression towards a, a capsular bag. You can see now I'll take piece by piece here. And the nucleus is simpler because we have done a good uh, hydro dissection. So good hydro dissection will give you access to a good uh, removal of cortex. Good delineation will give a better access to nucleus manipulation. So both things are important. Hydro dissection, delineation are important for routine cataract surgery here. Because I had done a very good uh, hydro dissection, I could aspirate with a FACO handpiece itself. You can see a clear safety of posterior capsule, little bit of peripheral cortex remaining that can be taken out subsequently and you can inject IOL, remove viscoelastic from both anterior and posterior, little bit of capsular polishing towards the edge of a, a capsule rexis because that's going to cover onto the IOL surface. So that should be taken away. If you are using a lens which has a 360 degree edge, you can put the lens in any direction. But if you have a lens which doesn't have a uh, edge in the optic haptic junction, the best position is uh, 0, 180 degree, because that's going to decrease the subsequent uh, photo, uh, photoptic symptom for these patients. So this is what you see, lens is stable despite increase of pressurize the bag. The bag gets inflated, in, in, uh, inflated by doing a hydro, uh, uh, hydro dissection of the wound area to uh, make it uh, thicker. 
and this is the end of uh, uh, surgery. You can see nicely placed in the bag lens. The lens doesn't move with the pressurization. That means the lens is well placed in the, in the bag. And this is the end of surgery. So this is how a normal surgery would go comfortably if you have a routine cataract like this. But you have a very challenging situation which has to be handled a little differently. So I would invite uh, Dr. Mahipal Sanjay.